Hello. In this video, we'll go over all the information surrounding writing assignment number two. Writing assignment number two, first thing is worth 12 points. Our first writing assignment was only worth five, so it's definitely worth a lot more. Overall, we still have 25 total points that are gonna come from our writing assignments in total. So, what are we doing in this writing assignment? Well, as usual, all writing assignments need to be type, double space, standard margin, margins, and font. But in this one, the big thing is that we're going to be examining the test grades from two different classes. So I'm gonna read through everything in the assignment, and then afterwards we'll go through and fill in a lot of the extra information. So, statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, and summarizing data in order to make conclusions and predictions. For this assignment, you will be given data and focus on what can be done after you have that data. So this assignment will focus on the organization and summarization of data and we'll finish with a brief consideration of limitations and extensions. So really quickly, the big idea here is I'm giving you the data. So we've kind of already discussed just the initial part, investigating a situation, what are the right questions, collecting data, all of that are very, very big steps in the statistical process. But the point here is that you already have that part. So that data has been collected and now we're kind of picking up on the next point. So what do you do from there? Well, once you have the data, again, the organization, the summary, that's gonna be the first big thing that we need to go through. And then afterwards, we'll get into some of the analysis and limitations. So that's just the short version of what we're aiming for in this assignment. So you are given the exam scores for students in two different classes. At the very end, I have them. I just call them class X and class Y. So those are your two different classes. Before you start writing, you will need to collate the data. You will treat these as sample data because these are not all the students in the school. You will organize the data by making a comparative stem and leaf display. You will then break the grades down into letter grades. So you're changing numerical data, numerical grades into letter grades, A, B, C, D, and F. Don't use any of the plus or minuses. We'll just stick to the whole letter grade, A, B, C, D, or F and you will make a comparative bar graph of the two classes based on those letter grades. So a comparative bar graph based on the letter grades themselves. Now you get to decide what numerical grades are, an A, a B, do you want your A's a 90 to 100? Do you wanna redo that scale? That's your own choice, you do that, but you just make sure you include that somewhere in your write-up. Finally, you will find the mean, median, and standard deviation for each class. So that's what I mean. First things first, you gotta collate all the data. So two graphs and charts, both of them comparative. The comparative stem and leaf display based on the numerical grades, and then the second part after you make those into letter grades that you make the comparative bar graph. So two displays that you need to make, both comparative, and then three values for each data set. For class X, you find the mean, median, and standard deviation, and then for class Y, same thing. And by the way, everybody, before you even think about writing, just like I have in the assignment, you wanna do all of that before you even start the writing process. So you get all that data sorted, organized, and now, now you begin the writing assignment portion. I mean, in your steps, you should probably take some time and hopefully kind of happen while you are collating. You're starting to look at the data. You're starting to already get a feel who did well, who didn't, what are the grades, what are the distribution. So you're already getting that sense. And then maybe you also wanna do a little bit more of your thinking, your possibilities, what could this be, what is the speculation. Maybe start thinking about the limitations. But first things first, get all the data collated and then you can start the writing portion. So now you're starting the actual writing assignment. Still need an introduction. You're still going to introduce statistics in general, describing how charts, tables, and other statistical values are used to summarize data and address the particulars of this assignment. Be sure to include a thesis statement. So you still need an introduction. It's just like anything else. Really think a lot about what we said, the first writing assignment, one of the main, I don't want to say problems, but one of the main suggestions was people going too far with their introduction. You know, even the end of this, this is still not a super long paper. If your introduction is filling the entire first page, definitely if it's going on to a second page, that is too far, you're taking it too far. So you want an introduction, and again, not just statistics everywhere, but let's already, in general, but in the parameters of this paper. 
So in general, focus on what goes, what's involved in the organization summary process. Make a statement about the particulars of what you're going to do here, comparing the two class data, some speculation analysis. There's your thesis statement, something along those lines. And now you get into the actual, the main, the body part of the paper. Follow this up by explaining, summarizing what you can from each data set and then compare the two data sets. Be sure to include some speculation on the circumstances that could have led to these results. Realize, actually, let me first just talk about the results. So again, so you finished your introduction, now you're getting into the body. So what are you doing? Well, again, you're discussing the class data. So get into it. What are the particulars? And this is spot, I give some suggestions later on, and this is certainly where style comes into play, but you could be very deliberate. Your introduction, your general introduction with your specific statement where you're going. Now let's look at class X. This is what I found. These are the values. This is what we're seeing. Some very basic quick analysis. Then another paragraph, do the same thing for class Y. These are the values. This is what we found. This is what we're seeing. Some of the patterns. Then another paragraph, comparing the two. Now, this isn't just a who did better, who did worse. As we see in statistics, these are open-ended questions. And you'll notice as you start getting into the data, I mean, there could be a situation where one class is all a bunch of A's and another class is a bunch of like D's and F's, and you could easily say one class is better than the other, but it's not often that simple. And you'll realize that when you start getting into the data I gave you here. So it's not just gonna be a simple, this is better than the other. You're gonna do some comparison. How do you compare? Well, again, you go through. What are some of the values? How do they compare? What do they mean? That is one of the biggest things. So many people just make this a basic list of reporting the stuff that you found, and this is not an opportunity, this is not a situation where you need to explain to your audience everything. You don't need to go back to every definition, but to get to the idea about what is common, what is average, to use that as a comparative tool, to talk about the standard deviation in terms of variability, consistency, spread, talk about that. Just looking at the charts, what are some of your quick impressions and feelings? Those are the comparisons. So that's probably another good separate piece. But now as you're getting into that, whether you do this separately as another separate paragraph or as you are doing some of that summary and comparison, speculate. The speculation, that's where you'll get into a little bit of maybe who did better, who did worse. There's gonna be some opinion in there. So just you state your opinion, but why you feel that way. I'll mention some other perspective that I think you should take as well to help guide you with that. But other speculation, what are the circumstances? I've told you nothing about these classes. But so you could think about it, look at the results and think to yourself, oh, well maybe this is the same class, but one's a morning class and one's a day class. One meets at 8 a.m. and the other meets at noon or something like that. Or maybe they're two completely different classes and you're looking at it from that sense. We're looking at how students did in English compared to how they did in history. Or it is the same class, but we're comparing two different professors. I mean, there's just so many different possibilities that could be there. Now again, there are so many possibilities. So it's not the point to think of every single possible scenario, but to have a couple. That's speculation. Not to go crazy and think of every possible thing, but to at least have a couple of possibilities. Okay, so there's a little bit more about speculation on the circumstance that could have led to these results. Okay, realize this isn't intended for you to explain how you made the graph charts or how you computed the mean standard deviation, but is intended to explain what the graph charts and values are telling us. Such a common thing that comes up on this paper. People get so bogged down in the paper explaining to the reader, I computed the mean by adding all the test grades together and dividing by how many there are. I computed the standard deviation by blah, blah, and going through. I made this stem and leaf display by making the stem and breaking the leaf. That is completely missing the point of what we're trying to do here, okay? This is not you explaining how to find statistical values. This is you having those values and using them. Think about this, if you read the newspaper or online articles or magazines, anything like that, that's kind of where we're going with this paper. 
you're getting, if you're getting any information, there are very often displays that are there, but they don't give you the formula or the technique of how they made that display or the formula for how they found that value. They just give it to you and then somewhere in the write-up talk about what that means. They bring up what the mean was. And again, in the context of that article, what is that telling us? That's what I want you to do here. So if you are getting bought, I mean, even I, you have to find those values and I'll talk a little bit about the end about how to put this paper together and there's still a lot of flexibility. But again, I don't want to see formulas. I want to see the reported values that I ask for. You certainly want to double check, make sure you did them correctly. Okay, you all have the same data, so we all better have the same mean, standard deviation, etc. There's no reason for any differences. So that's just a little something to think about, okay? Not how you found the values, but you report the values and use those values to describe the situation. Okay. And where we go. And now, so you will finish this assignment with a discussion of the limitations of the current data and how this could be extended to have a deeper discussion. That's the final piece. So the three components overall, the three components. The first is just, again, collating everything, getting the charts, the data, the values, putting all that together. The second piece is the comparison, the analysis part, looking at each class, a little comparison, a little speculation, and the third component. Every, this is where we always say it's easy to overstate things, to make grand conclusions based off of a very limited amount of information, and that's why I want this last component here. I don't want us to do that. Because at the end, it's not gonna be some easy case, class X is better than class Y. It's gonna be a little more open-ended than that. So there has to be an understanding that again, what is this? This is one test. So thinking about that from limitations, you're not gonna talk about how this class is clearly better than the other. It's like, well, what else would you need to know? How about not just the one test grades, how about another test? How about their averages? How about more students? You know, no matter what you're doing here, maybe it's the same teacher and they're doing different teaching techniques, but whatever it is, this is still a very limited amount of data. So we certainly want to express that as a part of limitations. And then a second part, what are the extensions? Well, again, more data could be a part of the extension. Whatever scenario you've envisioned and speculated on, there should be a way to extend that project, to think about doing it with other classes, to think about doing it with more data, to think about doing it with more teachers, with more schools, whatever the scenario is, there's definitely extensions to go with it. So that puts it all together. So little few suggestions about the overall structure. I was kind of saying this as we went along. So you have your introduction probably at least one paragraph to discuss each data set, another paragraph to do some comparison. Again, in this explanation, you should make some guesses to explain why the data is what it is. Some, again, conclusions, some predictions, but you always need to be clear what is actually given by the data versus what is your speculation. Where are you interjecting your opinion? Always be sure you're clear when you're writing that. And it's just a simple thing to say something like, well, you know, this class had eight A's compared to the other class had four A's. And then you can get into, and that's why I think. You know, you could always make that clear. This is clearly data. This is clearly something that happened. And then again, just that little introduction with a little extra in this, in this scenario, you know, just to make it clear, this is where you're putting in your thought. Okay. Again, part of the speculation and other things putting in, think of yourself as a student. Which class would you want to be in? You know, again, whatever scenario you set up by looking at that class data, by looking at that scenario, maybe there's the extra just like, well, by my schedule, I would have to pick this, but I would like. It's again, very much an opinion. There's no right or wrong, but address these things. So what class would you prefer to be in? Imagine that you're the instructor. Okay, there's a second part. So think of yourself as the instructor. How might you interpret these results and the overall class performance? What well, might you be differently? Would you be happy? Would you be unhappy? You'll probably need at least one more paragraph to discuss the limitations and extensions and then finish with your conclusion. But again, everybody, that's very rough. If, if some people, they really, really like that structure. So you go introduction, 
discussion of class X, discussion of class Y, uh, comparison discussion, make sure somewhere in there, maybe that's two paragraphs to do a direct comparison, and then a second comparison where you're talking a little bit more about speculation, and then another paragraph where you're talking about your limitations, your extensions, and then you finish with a conclusion. That's a, definitely a structure that you could follow, that flows, that makes sense, that's very natural for someone reading. You're not jumping all over. All the information you have is clearly laid out, then you get into the comparison, then that allows for the speculation. It's all a very good natural order. But again, creativity. How do you go through and set this up? Some people, they have this story in their head as they're thinking of, about speculation. So right from the beginning of the project, uh, right from the beginning of the writing assignment, they write from that perspective that if they're already thinking about two different classes. So in their introduction, they start off talking about that. They make up their own little experiment where, you know, Mr. Smith was going up against uh, Ms. Doe and they wanted to compare how this teaching technique worked. Or, you know, Mr. Smith wanted to look at how his morning class compared to his evening class. Or a department wanted to look at how lower level classes compared to upper level and use these two as samples. You can start that right off the bat paint that picture right from the beginning in your introduction, that allows you, sometimes people, when you do this in a very general way, again, speculation can go on forever. And then people start getting lost into these little rabbit holes that just, again, can just keep spiraling and spiraling with endless possibilities. So sometimes by making a fixed scenario and then following it the whole way, now you give yourself a con concrete way to answer questions. So now again, that speculation part or about you as the student, you as the instructor, now that allows you a little bit more definitive way to say, well, in this scenario, now I could say with more authority, I like the way class X went and I have to work a little more with class Y. So again, I always like to give you that kind of freedom. Always again, this is why the first submission and just a quick little reminder of that, you'll still have a first submission a chance to hand this in, get full feedback. I mean, you can always send me little questions, little uh, you know, ideas, little quick scenarios you wanna run by me, but the best way is to submit the whole paper, give me a chance to read it, give you my full feedback so that you can make the adjustments. I mean, it's really, really worked so well with writing assignment number one, so I hope for those of you who didn't take advantage of number one, that you think about doing that for assignment number two. Because again, there's a lot of possibilities here, but I like that creativity. For some students, that really makes these papers so much easier when they could put their own personal twist on it in that way. So again, a lot of possibilities, but you have a lot that guides you as well. So you keep going on, the very, very end here, when completed, three to six pages. I mean, three is, it's so hard to only get three pages on this, everybody. Just thinking about everything we said, this is really kind of a four to six as kind of a minimum. Because when you think about it, well, you do have to make the graphs and charts. By the way, Excel by hand, a different, you know, using Word, I don't mind, but they better be good, right? These are actually formally submitted now as a part of an assignment. So unlike some of the quick sketches on a test that you can make, you know, if you're gonna draw these by hand, just take an extra minute. Use like a ruler just to make sure your lines are nice and straight. Everything looks good. I mean, as always, all your graphs and charts, no matter how you make them, always have to be fully labeled, very clear. What's the data, your axes, your scale, all your, any units or anything like that. All that stuff always has to be well labeled. But just to realize, whatever way you prefer to make them. So just those two graphs and charts. I mean, a lot of people, that, that could fill a page easily just having those two items, okay? Your mean, median, mode, you know, where do you fit them in? Well, just a little bit more on style. Some people, the first page, they have their graphs right off the bat, and then it's a quick table, class X, mean, median, uh, standard deviation, class Y, mean, median, standard deviation. So all that big collating is all on one page. Maybe it's the first page, maybe it's the last page, Either way, it's fine, it's all there. Other people, they like to bring those graphs, charts, and values up. I mean, by the way, just because you put them in the front or in the back, as you're writing, you're certainly gonna refer to those values. You know, when you're reporting on your class, 
Of course, you want to report the mean was blank, the standard deviation. That should be a part of your report. And for other people, that's enough. They'd rather introduce all that stuff in the paper itself. So they start writing with an introduction, and then maybe they bring up the mean, median, standard deviation in each of the individual class paragraphs. And then maybe in the comparison part, that's where they want to show their graphs as a part of that comparison. But either way, all that information is there, and that's going to easily take up a page. And then to have an introduction, a body, a body where, again, you're discussing each individual class, then doing comparison, introducing some speculation, then also having limitations uh, and extension discussion, and then finally finishing with a conclusion, that's an easy two pages by itself of actual writing. So that's why I keep saying, to not be on the fourth page, there's probably something that's a little short in some respect. Either that or you made your graphs very, very small so that you've managed to fit all of them. You know, some people, instead of putting them one graph like this and another like this, they slide them next to each other, especially if you do these things by hand. Sometimes that's a little way to save some space. But overall, just to give you a little suggestion, the upper end, again, six pages. You know, if you have a page for your graphs and charts, that gives you five pages to write. Again, with what we have, there's a lot of speculation, there's a lot that can be said, but that's a good cutoff for you. That if you're going beyond that, you're probably taking it too far. That maybe you're either like spinning around, repeating. That's another common thing in this, everybody, that people repeat themselves over and over. That as they're discussing class X, they say something. Then after they discuss class Y, and then they get into the comparison, then they literally just say the same thing they said in the class X paragraph. And later on, they keep saying the same things. Again, it's common that similar ideas come up, but if you just keep rephrasing and saying the same thing over, that's an easy way that your paper gets a little carried away as well. So just a couple of things, again, little heads up, little guidance. At the very, very end, I'll come back to the grading rubric in just a moment, but then at the very, very end, you see the classes, uh, I'm sorry, the test scores. Test scores for all the students in class X, test scores for all the students in class Y. Again, don't be fooled, I say all, but always sample. A lot more students in the school, so we're still treating this as sample. You know, some of you, as we've mentioned before, graph and calculator, Excel, sample standard deviation versus population standard deviation, they're very, very subtly different values. So just to be clear, you're using the sample. That's the formula you have from your book. So if you're using any of those other tools to compare or check something like that, then, you know, and by the way, that's another good reason for Excel. Some people, it's just a simple matter of the standard deviation is a pain. Excel finds the value a lot easier. So again, you don't have to explain you used Excel. You don't have to explain you did it by hand. It's just a simple matter of reporting that value, but make sure you, that you found the value correctly. So you have all your test scores. Again, you just see them all listed there. That's what you're working for. So going back to the grade, so 12 total points. So think about this, everybody. Our last writing assignment is going to be worth eight points. We went five points on the first one, 12 points on the second one. So that gets us to 17. This is a big one. I'm asking you to do a lot. Just very quickly, the third writing assignment is going to be eight points. It's going to be very personal where you give examples of how statistics can work for you. So okay, we'll get into that at a much later point, but that's where third one, eight points, but this one is 12. Where do those 12 points come from? Well, five of the points come from the charts, tables, and the values. Just getting them all, just having them correct, okay? Reporting them, having them correct. So that's where, again, some people, they, they miss the point. Some people look at this assignment, they think just finding those values gives them everything, whatever they write is, it's like, no, that's not enough. Finding those values is a big chunk of your grade, but it's not all of the grade. And then for other people, they kind of like skirt around those and think they'll just write a paper based on just kind of looking at the data. You, move, you lose a lot of points by not finding those. And even again, if you make mistakes, errors, there's no excuse for that. You've got plenty of time so make sure you have correct values. So there's five points. Now you get into the writing. Another five points for the analysis from the given data. So the analysis, that's again, reporting from class X, reporting from class Y, the comparison. 
how do you get your full five points? Basically, you hit all the bullets that we talked about, that you do the direct, uh, direct analysis for both classes, then you do some comparison, that you include the speculation, that you include some conclusions, some of your own decision making in there, that you take the perspective of the student, that you take the perspective of the teacher. So again, there's a bunch there, and there's no right or wrong for any of that. It's supporting your answer. It's that you actually covered those items and that what you said makes sense compared to what else you've said and what the data actually shows. So you'd lose a half a point if you have incomplete pieces. This also goes in, I have analysis, but this also gets into the conclusion and introduction a little bit too. If those are lacking, I take a little bit of the points off here. So it's a half point off for incomplete pieces. And then it's a minus one for just missing it entirely. You don't take perspective, you don't do a comparison, you lose a whole point for things like that. And then the last part, oh, and by the the conclusion part would also be in that analysis as far as how I distribute the points. And then the discussions of limitations and extensions. That's probably just one paragraph, a couple of points, okay? Two points, because there's only a couple things you need to do, as we keep saying. Every project has limitations, every project can be extended. And for the most part, they could all be limit, they're all limited in the same way, and they're all extended in the same way. So we've already mentioned those things. So it's just including, and again, same thing. If you're incomplete with any of those pieces, you lose a half a point. And if you don't have one of them, you lose one full point. So five points for getting all the values and charts, getting all that, putting it in your paper. Another five points for the introduction body conclusion, having all that, but focusing on the introduction, the analysis, and the conclusion. And then the last two points is just that limitations and extension section. So again, everybody, we'll still have more conversation. We'll probably still have some emails. As far as the due date, we'll still have some discussion about that. We'll still have a first due date. It'll probably be a little over a week from now. And then just looking at our schedule, we'll set up our second final submission date as well.